So, man, you guys are doing a, uh, like a, so a sculpt, like, is it a whole big series or is it like, what are y'all doing? Um, we're building a sculpture for uh, the largest indoor water park. Nice. In the US. And I take it kind of like a mirror, but a 3D effect, you know, yeah, right? is that supposed, supposed to be the premise or, or the whole thing? Or is it just a sculpture that they just wanted commissioned? It's actually covering a whole like swim up bar. So you're inside, it's like a big cave that you're in. And it's artificial rocks, uh, and got an elephant, so like a gazebo that's like African style. Pretty cool. And how'd you get hooked up? I mean, how, you know, have you done that type of work before? That's all, that's what I do as a day job. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. So your day job is, is, is sculpting? Yeah. Art or is it sculpting like you know like? It's art. Yeah. I never saw it as art. I saw it as construction, but it's art. Um, but you know that's. But you gotta. You gotta have some. Some artistic. Yeah, for sure. To you. Yeah, you gotta be creative. Yeah, most definitely. You have a, a mind that can just. You can go off of whatever you know an idea. And just but they did give you like a like, schematics to that, and they say, hey, that's yeah, what we want to yeah. go with, or they say, hey, you know what, kind of. Free ball this whole thing and just no, this is their like second or third water park and they make it uh, they they keep the, the theme going you know? so what's the craziest thing you ever sculpted um this elephant's being pretty intense but the uh we did the mirage hotel volcano in vegas on the strip back in 2009 so we redid it that was pretty cool so now so you got that going on right and then now you, you're still promoting your you know yeah from up, but like ever since i started i started when i was like 18 and i would travel to denver san diego everywhere and my brand i would take with me and i'd go to the skate shops and, you know like a sales rep pretty much and push the brand push so what got you into skateboarding and just doing that that particular gig skateboarding is a funny story i guess well it's just weird um i was 11 10 11 years old and i was actually diagnosed with leukemia and, yeah, I had cancer for a couple years, three years or something like that. And my cousin, I was released from the hospital finally. My cousin was, hey man, like you've been sitting around the house doing nothing. You're pale. You, you look like crap. I'm gonna take you out. You're gonna come with us. We're going skateboarding. And I was like skateboarding. Okay, I guess. So I went. He gave me a hand-me-down skateboard. And fell in love with it. That was it, man. That was it. That's pretty awesome, bro. Yeah. So. I just skateboarded ever since then, never stopped. Always wanted to go, always wanted to skate. And it's high school, that's all I talked about. That's all, everything. I couldn't have a girlfriend because I was just talking about skateboarding. All I wanted to do was skate. So from there, you kind of just stuck with it. And then, what but what makes you create your own brand? I was 16. Uh, dude, I was with my buddy Lex. And I don't know, man. It was just, I had this idea to make skateboards because things were transitioning at that time too in the skateboard industry to everyone was going from American made wood to or American made boards with wood from Canada to Chinese made boards with wood from China and it was just like now is that a big difference big difference like a bit uh, like an American made board that month and a half so you, you could feel that pop Chinese board after two weeks you could already feel it kind of kind of warping like warping like waterlogged like it's been in the water doesn't it doesn't feel the same it doesn't have that pop anymore so but i guess at that point skateboards were coming heavy from china or was it just it like the just the boards itself without the trucks and everything else it was just the boards by themselves. okay and they were coming over but the, so but the i mean the thing that people transitioned though was the money they wanted to make more profits so going to china was money money so money. the manufacturers here or the distributors here figured that's the best way to do this yeah. So all the big corporations did that, and then there was not that many like brands left for making boards here. So I found a guy who was just making boards by himself, one guy doing his thing, and uh, I hit him up, and we joined together. Me and my buddy Lex started the company, and we couldn't even really think of a name yet. It was just, uh, we were talking about it for a while, and one day I was in the car, and I said, hey guys, what do y'all think about the name Makeshift? And they were like, dude. Yeah, and I thought of that because the very first skateboard ever created was makeshift. It was a piece of wood with roller skate wheels. Somebody just made it. So something authentic, man. Something yeah. great like that. And the makeshift. That's hot. Skateboard. That's hot. That's hot. So, um, so now, 
And of course, you did your, your gig on the Lexington. Yeah. Right? That was good for you? That got you a lot of, a lot more recognition? Yeah, a lot of recognition, a lot of respect from the industry, every type of... Yeah. So you know, you can... You. Uh, now, what's the craziest guy? thing you've seen in skateboarding yet? Mm. Better yet, let me ask you this. What's the craziest thing you've done on a board? I don't know. Trying this 15 skier hand row at the Selena Auditorium. Okay, so what is that? It's a hand. Did you say the hamster rail? A hand rail. <laughs> so like. Okay. All right. So talk to me. Educate me. The rail goes like down the stairs and holds. Okay. Holds in your hand. So help people just from get down. So at Selena, there's this 15 skier hand rail here at the auditorium, and a lot of people have done it now. Back then, nobody had really done it. And I was going for a 50-50 grind, so that's with both of your trucks, the wheels on the on the rail. Okay. I made it like halfway down, and there was all these BMX riders. Well, back then, everybody was together, all the BMX or skateboarders, everyone always just kind of rode together and stuff. And I was trying that. And I finally made it halfway down, and halfway down I fell off. And I never actually landed it, so I was just like, Dang, I had it, man. That was like my, what is it? That was my, uh, the thing I could never achieve that I always was trying to get to, you know, and it was, I, I never landed it. But. So, what's the odds of you doing this again? Oh, no, it's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? I mean, it's just... Uh, it could happen, but I just, I don't, I don't do big things like that anymore. Or try, try that. <laughs> don't blame happen, me. So. Look, I don't even want to go past the second step on a ladder. Because I know that's just going to hurt. Yeah. Some of these kids, they're brave, you know, they don't oh, care. They're ripping, man. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, it's like, something like that, I see, I'll be off for two, three weeks. And these kids bounce back like it's nothing. This kid from, uh, he used to, we used to skate together and I tried to get him to ride for our brand. And I don't, I think I gave him a board, a couple boards in the beginning. Uh, he's from Oklahoma City, his name's Kyle Walker. He was like 10 years old, I think, or something like that. And he was ripping then. He just got Skater of the Year this year. From Seriously? Magazine. Yeah, so that's pretty cool seeing all our homies, like, still pushing, still going. And, you know, achieving with their dreams and stuff, it's, it's rad. So what you got coming up, what's big right now? We can talk about this. What's gonna be big right now? I'm working on an action sports event for Corpus. Okay. Uh, I want to bring back the feeling, like we used to go to the Key Head downtown and that's where everybody used to meet up and skate. And we really don't have that vibe anymore. You could just show up there and you know your homies are gonna be there, I do. Uh, everyone's kind of separated. Yeah, even in just skateboarding, but BMX, everyone's apart from each other. Like BMX is BMX, skateboarding is skateboarding. But back then we used to all just rock. And so like, I want to bring back that feeling. I want to bring back the kiteboarding. We used to have a big kiteboarding scene here with the US Open here a couple times. And so I want to bring all that back together, surfing and all the all the action sports together. Man, is that something you got to be like totally in shape for? When it comes like, you know, kite kite surfing. Skateboarding, riding, skateboarding. I've seen some old cats get into it because they come from the old school era. Yeah. You know, it's, I, is that something that you never lose? It depends. Like, I haven't lost my skateboarding. Like, I can stop skating. Like, I've been skating for three weeks since I've been gone. Okay. And the other day, the first thing I did was do a kickflip. So, it, it's almost like muscle memory. You know these things, but being in shape, you don't really have to be in shape. You can still skate and you can still ride a bike. You know what I mean? And, it's just uh, pushing yourself to go that extra step. And once you do, you know, you, you push yourself again. And that's the best part about action sports is there's no coach. You don't have, it's, it's all about yourself and self-progression. And that's like, I think the best thing about this is. So what would be the one thing people don't know about you? Um, It's gotta be something, Josh. The one thing I don't know. <laughs> you like to dress up like a clown and go skateboarding? Nah. Honey. <laughs> yeah. Big old red nose. That's it. Um, man, one thing people don't know about me. Uh, I get along with everybody. Um, I, I don't really... A lot of people come up to me and they're like, oh man, that guy, he doesn't want to talk to me or something. And it, it's not that. I'm just like, if I'm skateboarding, I'm skateboarding. I'm in my zone. and I'm not there to talk about business or stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, that's my free time. And, I think people get the wrong impression about that type of stuff. And, uh, and now, well now, where can they, if they want to contact you, how would they do this? Um, <clears throat> just Facebook hit me up on the Make Sure page or something, but 
Um, they can give me a call too. You know, send me a text or something. What would be the number? Uh, three six one four two nine seven eight four one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Josh Garcia. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro.